Today, we are living in a world that is crying out for hope, peace, and justice. Everywhere we look, we see a society plagued by division, conflict, and turmoil. From political unrest to social injustice, we are witnessing a nation in crisis, struggling to find its way forward. But in the midst of all this chaos, there is a glimmer of hope. A hope that lies in the power of prayer and the strength of faith. As a nation, we have been brought to our knees, not just by the challenges we face, but also by the recognition that we cannot solve these problems on our own. It is only through humility and surrender that we can find the courage to face our challenges and the wisdom to overcome them. In this sermon, we will explore the importance of prayer and faith in times of crisis. We will examine how we can turn to God in times of struggle, and how we can find strength, comfort, and guidance in His Word. We will also discuss how as a nation, we can come together in unity, and how we can support one another in our journey towards healing and restoration. So, whether you are seeking hope or looking for answers, I invite you to join me in this powerful exploration of how we can rise up together in faith and unity. Israel had known for many years that God was their creator, sustainer, and deliverer. They knew that it was God who brought them to the promised land and helped them win battles. But something changed when there was a change in leadership. In the Bible book of 1 Kings, it says that King Ahab of Israel was the worst king ever. He did more wrong than any other kings in Israel from David to Solomon to Jeroboam and Rehoboam. This shows us that no one is perfect and only God is perfect. But what made God think so badly of King Ahab? Why did he do worse than all the other kings? Ahab did something that was bad in the eyes of God. He married Jezebel, who was a daughter of a foreign king and priestess of Baal. Baal was a pagan god who made things grow and made food so people could eat. People thanked him for growing the wheat to make bread. Baal was the god that people thanked for many things. Whenever a new calf was born in the barn, it was because of Baal that the cow became fertile. When a wife got pregnant and children were born, it was thanks to Baal who created life inside her womb. People also thanked Baal when it rained because there would be water from the clouds to grow food on the ground. But if you lived in Israel during Jezebel's rule and didn't believe in Baal, she would kill you. The Bible says that Jezebel killed all the priests in the temple who were loyal to God. She forced her false religion on an entire nation. People knew that only God created the heavens and earth, and that we live because of him. But instead of standing up against Jezebel's lies, they were more afraid of her than they were afraid of God, so they bowed down to it. It had been three and a half years since the nation chose to follow Jezebel's deceptions. When you turn away from God, bad things happen. When you ignore the Prince of Peace you will have chaos instead of peace. If a whole nation turns away from God, they must turn back to Him in order to return to peace and safety. It is not God's responsibility to come to us. It is our responsibility to turn back to Him. We should turn back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same God who created the heavens and earth. He has a name that is above every other name, making Him the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Being with Him will bring joy, hope for tomorrow, less pain from the past, lighter burdens, freedom from yokes, healing for the lame, voice for those who are voiceless, sight to those who are blind and life for those who have died. Do you want to know where relief comes from? It doesn't come from the promises of men on earth. Relief comes from the God who has promised you the end from the very beginning. He is the only one who can make a way when there seems to be no way. If you walk away from Him, it is time to turn back to the God who loved you and calls you His own. It's not a matter of if you bow, it's a matter of when you bow. In 1 Kings chapter 18, we see an entire nation on their knees. This is because they have bowed to the false god of Baal and because of their idol worship, their economy is crushed. They have nothing to put their faith in other than kneeling before God who can answer and make a way. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 to 11, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and is now sitting at God's right hand. God has given Jesus a special name and all people should bow down before him and admit that he is Lord. You can choose to do this now or wait until you stand in front of Jesus for judgment. Either way, everyone will eventually bow down and confess that Jesus is Lord. The people of Israel wanted to please Jezebel, so they worshipped Baal. 
Some people tried to do both, worship Baal in public and pray to God in private. Obadiah was one of them. In the book of 1 Kings, there is a story about a priest who would sacrifice at Baal's altar every day and then go home and pray to God, asking for forgiveness. Jesus said that it is not possible to serve two masters, either you are friends with the world or with God. But no matter how inconsistent we are, God never changes, he is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. A man named Elijah went into a throne room of a king named Ahab. He preached one message that lasted three and a half years. He was saying that no matter how people act, God still exists and is great and deserves to be praised. Every morning God's mercy is renewed from sunrise to sunset, so his name should always be praised. Elijah was telling everyone that God can do more with one person who is standing up for him than with an entire generation who ignores him. He said it would not rain until he said so, because without rain, Israel could not have crops or money. Elijah was like a preacher walking into Wall Street and saying the economy will not get better until he says it will. In Elijah's days, some people blamed the government for their problems instead of taking responsibility. But Elijah knew that the government is always a reflection of the people and people are influenced by what they hear in church. So, if things need to change, everyone needs to work together to make it happen. Elijah asked the people a question, should you serve God or Baal? He knew their decision would affect their future and the future of generations to come. In a similar way, our decisions today in the United States will shape our future and the future of our descendants. Elijah's question still rings true today. Some people don't believe in God, and this is wrong. Even if the government doesn't say it, God is still on the throne. It's not popular to talk about Jesus and salvation, but believe that the power of the gospel comes from Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. Paul said that he is not afraid to tell people about Jesus. He said that believing in Jesus is the only way to be saved. Paul asked if God is real, then why don't you follow him? But if he's not, then go away from him. You have to pick one, either believing or not believing. Paul said that when you learn the truth about God, it will free you from your worries and doubts. Israel is the only country born out of God's purpose. We should be thankful to Israel for their contributions to our Christian faith. It is important to pray for peace in Jerusalem. You need to understand that it's only the truth that will set you free and not Congress, Wall Street, or positive thinking. Jesus Christ is the only one who can truly set you free because when he sets someone free, they are truly free. Elijah asked the people a very important question. He wanted to know how things had been going for them during the three and a half years with no rain, a bad economy, and not enough food. He was asking to see if they would choose God or their false God. They didn't answer but said they agreed with Elijah but were afraid of making their false god mad so they asked him to talk to her for them. Sometimes people know what is right and wrong, but they don't speak up. They don't have the courage to take a stand and be brave. How long will you live like this? How much pain are you willing to accept before you change your mind and go back to God who has given you everything? God is waiting for you to take a stand, because when one person does it, many more can follow. Elijah challenged the 450 false prophets of Baal by saying that they should put their gods to the test. He represented his god while the false prophets represented theirs. Elijah was facing a very unfair situation, 450 false prophets against him. He told them that they could do it their way and he would do it his way. But the god who answered with fire would be the one true god. It was a battle between faith and foolishness, and faith will never make someone look foolish because you can tell who the person is, based on their actions. Elijah had faith, but the 450 false prophets were fools as the Bible says that fools think there is no God. There were 450 false prophets who started to prepare a sacrifice. They built an altar, cut up the animal and put it on the altar. Then they danced, shouted, twisted and turned around in order to wake up Baal and get him to send down fire on the sacrifice. As this went on for hours, Elijah was watching them and he made fun of them by trash talking, which may have been the first time he ever did that. Someone suggested that they should yell louder and even cut themselves to show how serious they were about asking their God for help. But this didn't work because they did not have faith in God. Instead, 
Elijah decided to put his faith in God and he started by rebuilding the altar of the Lord. The Bible says that 12 stones were used in an altar. This is because there were 12 tribes in Israel. How many things have been neglected and need to be fixed? Our communities can be improved if we put effort into them instead of ignoring them. Do you remember a time when you knew the people who lived in your neighborhood? Nowadays, when someone knocks on our door, we look at our phones to see who it is. Elijah understood that the only way things could improve in Israel was if the nation was united. He used 12 stones to rebuild an altar that had been neglected. The same goes for our country today, we must be unified if we want things to get better. God promises us a blessing when there is unity, so we must embrace it. Our families need to come together. The church also needs to be united. We must listen to each other and we should not think that we are too important. Let's ask for God's blessing on our families, future, business and everything else we do. When there is unity, God gives us his blessing. When there is division, it causes chaos. Elijah prepares the sacrifice after he brings unity and repentance. The Bible is clear that shedding blood is necessary for the forgiveness of sins. Elijah prepared a sacrifice as a representation of Jesus Christ, who was sacrificed for sinners. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18 states that Jesus suffered once for all sins. At the end, Elijah asked people to bring barrels of water and pour them over his sacrifice, even though it seemed strange to do so. This teaches us that faith can lead us in ways we don't expect but will never make us look foolish. Elijah was offering something to God that he wanted God to give the people. He wanted rain, but because of the people's decisions, it was impossible for God to bless them. Elijah said, Lord, if I make this sacrifice, I want you to pour out what I want from you. Some people today wonder when God will pour out his blessings on their life. Elijah prayed to God, asking him to honor the sacrifice so that people would know he is God. And when Elijah prayed, fire fell from the sky and consumed not only the sacrifice but also the stones around it. Our God answers our prayers and blesses those who ask for his help. He promised to never leave us or abandon us and he will pour out his blessings on those who rely on him. Do you need help today? God is the one who helped Joshua win a battle and David be brave. He can give you strength and confidence too. No matter what kind of situation you are in, God will provide peace or fire to help you out. His truth never ends and he always keeps his promises. If you ask him for help, he will answer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to help us bring you more word of God to the world. Here is another sermon you will love. Thank you. And God bless you.